so um had to do a part two man because i saw a couple of comments and i know there's going to be more so i want to do a part two and i want to talk about the mothers and the daughters man let's talk about uh my generation man i'm a 90s baby man let's talk about my generation and before that you know what i'm saying the ongoing curse of uh black mothers disrespecting their daughters and putting their younger daughters down the reason why they wear these wigs and weaves nowadays these sew-ins these blonde wigs blonde weaves and all these these uh different colors and these unnatural uh textures, you know what I'm saying? Trying to trying to appease to the white people, man. Trying to pe trying to appease to the white man, you know what I'm saying? And they they really be flicking it and playing with it like it's actually theirs, like it actually grew out of their head, you know what I'm saying? It goes back to the moms, to the mothers, you know what I'm saying? My 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 uh, cousins, my female cousins, my aunt used to call them the b words and the hos, you know what I'm saying? Telling their hair was nappy, put them down and stuff like that. That's the reason why. Be honest, man. If you really ask a lot of these uh, black women, young, middle age, the reason why they really wear wigs and weaves and who who was the ones that put in their hair was their mothers. Their mothers was, had the straightener to their hair every day. Their mothers was trying to keep their hair straight to appease the people. Oh, you, you're not going to be going to church looking like that. You're not going to be going to school. You're not going to be going around with me with your hair like that. Why not? And the truth is, the thing about white people, man, white people will only see you the way you see yourself and treat you the way you treat yourself. Let me, let me, if you don't understand, if you slow, if you don't understand what I mean by that, let me, let me explain. It goes back to the slavery days, man. You can't believe these movies like the Django. All right. Like the Django, you know what I'm saying? And the Will Smith movie. I seen, I didn't see the movie, but I saw, you know, trailers of it and stuff like that. You can't believe all those movies thinking that the, the melanated man was the hero and, and saved the day and risked his life for his family to, free, to help the slaves and the free people and stuff like that. Whatever you see them put out, whatever you see these movie companies, whatever the government tells you, you do the opposite. You think the opposite. Whatever these movies depict the storyline is, it's the opposite. That's, that's not how it went down, man. Black people were enslaving each other. I'm not saying they all were, but I'm saying a lot of them were. And the white man capitalized off of it. The Europeans capitalized off of it and, and did it on a broader scale. Because they had the ships, they had the artillery, they had more more resources to, to food. And mainly it was the artillery, so they could take over. You know what I'm saying? And even if they didn't take over, they were, there was a lot of uh, other black people that were enslaving each other. And they were trading goods. They were trading, they needed more guns. So they could hold each other captive. This is real talk. But the, nobody wants to talk about this, man. People only only want to talk about one side of slavery. But if you really go, get to the root, again, man, the Europeans discovered black black people enslaving each other. And they just did it on a broader scale. That's all it really was. Now, back to the daughters, man. Mother and daughters. A daughter wants to be like her mom. A daughter follows in, in her mom's image. So, so the reason why a lot of a lot of black women, you know, what I'm saying, are, are three o fours, and then they're having all these kids out of wetlock is because their mothers were doing it. Again, I seen it with both of my female cousins. They have a bunch of kids out of wetlock, and my aunts have had them and and others out of wetlock. It's a it's a repeating cycle. It literally is a repeating cycle. So you can't sit here and tell me again that. Black people are not the most racist when mothers are raising their daughters and they're calling them to be where they're calling them HOs, they're giving them setting bad examples for them. And when they follow in the footsteps, they want they want to they got their hands up and they, they like have nowhere to blame. Oh, you did this to yourself. You put this on yourself. That's what my aunts told them. You did this to yourself. You put yourself in a situation. No, they, they were following after you. There was no man in the house messing with street dudes. Both of my aunts, street dudes. Street dudes, God is my witness. Both of my aunts, they were with street dudes. And my female cousins followed in their footsteps. I promise you. I remember my my, my one of one of my aunts, he had a had a gun on him. Mom, it was me, my mom, and my stepdad. We were at the house and he didn't know my stepdad was there. He didn't, you know, hood beef and being immature. Typical. I'm gonna I'm gonna say it again, man. Typical. That's the problem with black people. Only black people act like they own somewhere, own something, man. Me grow up in the 90s, man. Where hood you from? What are you doing here? You don't own no streets. Dude's telling this my block. How many times we done heard that? This my block. You can't sell this, this on, you can't sell the government's drugs on my block. 
Have you? Did you pave these streets? Did you, do you do construction? Are you? Have you done masonry? Do you know how to do masonry? No. But black people want to act like they own something. They don't even own the buildings they live in. Let's talk about it, man. Black people not the most racist. Let's really talk about it. Stay with me. I'm going to cook. I'm going to cook. <laughs> black people don't even own the apartment buildings. The stoop they sitting on. But they want to tell you you can't come to their neighborhood. They want to tell you this day block, this day corner. You can't sell drugs on their corner. And I'm not talking about now because obviously black people not selling drugs nowadays. But I'm from the 90s. I'm from where, where you had to use these. Yeah, and people were getting shot, but they were fighting. A lot of dudes would jump you, but if it was a fair one, it was a, it was a fair one. You had to use these. You're not on a fight. These dudes are shooting nowadays. They're punks. So let me talk, because you got to go back. If you want to know why things are the way they are today, we got to go back to the 90s, man. We got to go back to the 80s and, and, and the 90s. Most of the early 80s was good, but when you got to the late 80s and the, and the early 90s, they got bad with the black on black. It went from Black Panthers... To, to Black Panthers versus Black Panthers type, type situation. So let's talk about it, man. Let's really talk about it. Everywhere I go, I would go through plenty, plenty, plenty streets in New Haven when I was young in the 90s, walking the streets, man. If they didn't know you, they were, they were ready to approach you, ready to fight you. Like they own the streets. You can't come to my hood. This is my hood, repping hoods. If I see somebody that's not from my hood, I got to fight them. I got to kick them out. What type of shit is that? You don't own anything. You don't own it. Again, you don't even own the apartment and the stoops you're sitting on. You got to pay rent to some Jewish man. You got to pay rent to the white man. You got to pay rent to whoever own that, owns the, that apartment buildings. Don't even own a car. Back when I was growing up, these dudes don't even own a freaking car. And they want to tell you where, where you can't go. Ready to fight you and jump you and rob you, shoot you, and tell you where you can't be. You shouldn't be here. Black people not the most racist. So you got the mothers putting the daughters down, setting bad examples. No father in a household because they street dudes in and out of prison. And then you got the sons on the corner telling other melanated men where they can and can't go. That they own the hoods, they own this, they own that. No guidance. And you could blame the men all day. You could say, oh, it's the no good men fault. You said it. They were with street dudes. A lot of these black women have been getting impregnated and, and, uh, and procreating with street dudes. And then the kids turn out bad. It's not just that, though. It's not just that. It's the hate. These dudes, these street dudes that be procreating with these women, they hate women. They hate themselves. All right? Stay with me on this video, man. I'm still cooking. I'm cooking a good meal. I promise you. You're going to love it. Lick your fingers. Bon appetit. However you like it. However you you going to like this meal. Listen to me. What type of man will get with a woman, make her feel good, play good on her emotions? You know what I'm saying? She think everything is sweet. Y'all end up having a... Whatever. Y'all have sex. Don't use a condom. Or the condom pop. However, however it happens. You, but you have a child with her. Everything was good before. You were whispering the sweet nothings in her ear. Y'all were going out to eat. Y'all was shacking up. Whatever y'all were doing, whatever y'all was having good. But as soon as the baby comes, you want to be a piece of shit. You want to be a deadbeat. You want to switch up on her. Only a man who hates himself first. Because we're not even going to talk about how he's hurting a woman. He hates himself. Only a man who hates himself would do that kind of stuff, man. I was young. I was running the streets. I, was, I, was, I wasn't using protection all the time. If I would have got a woman pregnant, you think I'm going to be a deadbeat and just say, no, nah, I don't want to do it with you now because I didn't plan on having a baby with you. It was, a, it was an accident. You were an accident. You know what? Fuck you and this baby. Because I grew up with plenty of niggas that was saying that. And I'm using the N-word because I'm getting mad. I'm cooking. Forgive, forgive me. I don't even use the N-word. Look at all my videos. I don't. And I made a video saying I don't use it. But I got mad. God forgive me. I apologize, people. But yeah, I grew up around plenty of other dudes who um were getting chicks pregnant left and right and being deadbeats. But I couldn't live, my, live with myself to be that type of dude. I couldn't. And I'm not wishing on myself, God forbid, if a woman popped up out of nowhere and said that that I was I had a kid and it was I was the I was a father and she had DNA. I took a DNA test and it was mine. I'm going to take care of the kid because I'm not I I can't I couldn't do that. My father wasn't there for me. I don't know if it wasn't by choice or not, but I won't want to be that type of dude. I won't want to repeat that process, and that would make me a hypocrite. And that would means I hate myself. That's my seed. That's my sperm. Your, your, your kid is a spitting image of you. 
If I was to be that type of person, that means I would hate myself and I hate my sperm. I hate my own seed. These dudes hate themselves and then they hate women. Because again, they made, they made it seem like everything was good and then once the baby came, they switched up. They didn't want to be no, there no more. They realized life was hard. They realized they got to work a nine to five, maybe two nine to fives. They got to grind it out. They realized they couldn't go to the club no more. They realized they couldn't hang on the corner and tell dudes you can't be here. This is my block. Get off my block. They realized they couldn't drink a beer and hang on the corner, smoke weed and threaten dudes' lives and sell drugs, sell the government's drugs on the corner all day. They realized they couldn't do that no more. They realized they had to work, 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 work and take care of the kid and work, work, work till the, the kid was at least 18. And they said, this is too much. So they bailed out like some punks because they hate themselves and they hate women. Black people are the most racist. You gonna tell me I'm lying about anything in this video? If you gonna tell me I'm lying, you're a liar. I saw a comment in the last video said, man, you yap too much. You yap too much. What do you mean I yap too much? I speak facts too much. That's what you should have said. And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't yap too much. If I yap too much, don't watch my videos. Why are you here? Why are you here? I'm trying to wake people up, man. I'm trying to wake up the youth to let them know what it really is, man. Black people hate you, man. They really do. They hate you. They will take you out if they could get... In a, in a better position to you. If you are in the way, they will step on you. Look what happened to Rich Homie Kwan, man. Look what happened to him. He was independent. I didn't realize he was independent, man. I should have known more facts. But I, I told a lot. I, I told a lot of truth in there, man. I didn't really tell no lies. I just was mistaken on a few things. But look what happened to him, man. If you don't get in line, black people will set you up, man. His brother, his brother was was at the funeral with his necklaces on. Did y'all see that? Rich homie Kwan brother said he found him with food in his mouth on the kitchen, passed out, and then laid him on the couch, did not call 911. Then he at the funeral, what, rocking his chains, talking about some, I lost my dad earlier this year, and now I lost my brother, da 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 I mean, what type of speech is that? His own brother, his own blood, Cain and Abel. I told you I'm cooking in this video, man. We living in the last days. We really, really, really are because we have social media. This shit been going on since the 90s, since I was a young 16, 17, 18. In early 20s, this shit been going on. But there's just social media wasn't, there was no TikTok. There was no Facebook. There was no Snapchat. There was no Instagram. There was no YouTube. So now we see it all. Now people who weren't, didn't realize it are realizing it. You youngsters, y'all don't know shit. Y'all don't know nothing. You youngsters think you youngsters think you tough because you got guns and switches and all the, and, and all this shit. You don't know nothing, man. Y'all don't know a damn thing because y'all this shit is new to y'all. This shit is not new to me. This shit is not new to '90s babies. It's not. Black people hate each other. Black people are the most racist. I could go on all night with all night with this video. I really could. Look at Kamala Harris. Look at what she's done. She done lied about her grandparents. But people still gonna gonna wanna vote for her. That that doesn't tell you that black people are racist. There are women literally saying to leave your husbands if they don't want to vote for Kamala Harris. She locked up plenty of black men for petty weed crimes. There's, there, there's a dude who came out and talked about it, how she was laughing when he got convicted. And he ended up being innocent. He wasted years of his life wasted. Money can't buy your time back. And you and you want you want a black person to vote for Kamala Harris? And she laughed at a dude innocently getting locked up and possibly getting stabbed to death in jail or his butthole took it from him? Man, this is a real video. Don't laugh about that either if you think it's funny. I'm being real, man. This shit is not a joke. But women say, oh, leave your husband, leave your man if he doesn't want to vote for Kamala. You are racist. And this is black people saying that. Black people are the most racist. They want you to vote for a person who hates black people, black men. Come on, man. What are we talking about? Kamala Harris brought up Meg Thee Stallion. Meg Thee Stallion got Tory Lanez locked up. I'm not a fan of celebrities and rappers, but come on now. We know damn well he ain't. He didn't shoot her in the foot. And if he did, it wasn't intentionally. And even if it was, he should not have been locked up for that. There's dudes who done done way worse who ain't doing up the time he done got. We know Jay-Z is behind that shit, man. Jay-Z signed Meg Thee Stallion. She signed to Jay-Z, Meg Thee Stallion. Correct? Correct me if I'm wrong. But black, black people aren't the most racist towards each other. Y'all gonna say I'm, I'm yapping again, right? Shame on you. Shame on all you people, man. Shame on all you people, man. 
You people still gonna say King James, King James, LeBron James. Why would he be okay with that nickname? That's in the Bible. Isn't King James a, a, a name of a, a book of a book in the Bible or a Bible? I've heard the King James version. I've heard that before. You see how they play with Christianity right in front of our faces? But he attended, ain't no party like a Diddy party. Excuse me. He sacrificed his son into the NBA. And you may say, then what do you mean he sacrificed his son into the NBA? His son should not be have to play basketball. He is a billionaire. Why would you want your son to play for a racist sport? Or, or run up and run up and down the field, risk his health if he took the mm -mm. I'm thinking he took the mm because he passed out. A lot of these young players are passing out. But why would why would you even want your son to play basketball and play sports or run up and down the court? Why would you want him to do that? Why would you not want him to do something else? He doesn't have to play ball, his son. Why would you not want him to be a rocket science or something? Go go to the moon before Elon Musk does. Do what Elon Musk is doing. Why would you not want him to do that? Because he sacrificed his son, man. For LeBron to be in the NBA, he has to put his son in the NBA. You notice all these players are doing it. Melo's preparing his son. Dwayne Wade is preparing his son. There's tons of NBA players that have their son in the NBA. Tons of female, uh, uh, tons of male NBA players that have female daughters that are in the in WNBA. I'm not making this shit up. This is facts, man. Black people sacrificing their kids, man. Black people sacrificing their brothers for money, for fame, for status. It goes back to the slave slavery days when the Europeans pulled up and said, oh, look at this. We got tons of black people and they they enslaving each other. They got the, the, the some of the men are, are graping the women. They're beating each other. We could do this on a, on a broader level. They're stupid. We're smarter than them. We have the ships. We can take this over here, across. Just like now, man, you got the Jewish people who were running the music industry. Pretty much running the whole world, honestly. At least at least the United States of America, the Jewish are at least running the United States of United States of America, to be honest. But um Yeah, they're doing it now. They're running the industry, man. It's, it, it, they got Black people doing this stuff, man, sacrificing each other for a buck. And then everything has to get get back. And there's life insurance policies, man. They got life insurance policies all on of them. So for the gatekeepers, the state gatekeepers, they got to keep sacrificing. Like the Birdmans, the Yo Gotti's, the Jay-Z's, the Diddy's. Diddy's done, for sure, for sure. He's looking like Diddy's done. Possibly the Rick Ross. The Jermaine Dupri's, the Snoop Dogs, the gatekeepers, man. Dr. Dre. I forgot to mention Killer Mike was at Rich Homie Kwan's funeral. I found that funny. Killer Mike. What was Killer Mike doing there? Out of all people. This is how you know Rich Homie Kwan was killed, man. He was sacrificed. Killer Mike. Killer Mike spoke at the, at the funeral. Killer Mike, man. He's a, He's such a lame. He's such a loser. He's he's got a rap duo with the, with that white dude or whatever like that, but um can't respect that dude. But yeah, man, y'all you people don't y'all don't y'all don't see the stuff that's going on right in front of your faces, man. This is why this is why I stay to myself. This is why I don't mess with people. But I'm not gonna repeat like I, what I said in, in part one about white people always help me. I already said that, man. About white people always help me. But yeah, man, it's just what it is. I've dealt with it my whole life. I've dealt with uh. Black people hatred hatred towards me, man. I was always the 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 quiet one, man. I really I didn't really get into much trouble. I was a ladies' man. I was a ladies' man. I honestly I honestly really was, man. However, I could try to get some butt and and, and get some get some buns, get some punani, however you want to say. It. However, I could try to get between a woman's legs. I was doing that, and like I made a video previously on this channel about the dudes jumping me. The dude made up a lie and got his brother and his homies to jump me, saying to say I tried to jump him over a female that he wanted, a mind that I had. You know, I dealt, I got a lot of hate from from uh, my own people because of women I was dating. You know, I got hate from my own blood. You know, he, he's gone now. He's he's no longer here. I'm not gonna say his name, but he hated on me a lot. This one girl I had that he really wanted. He hated on me so much. You know, it, it didn't even make no sense. And he got girls. You know, he might have been co considered better looking than me. You know, if we were standing next to each other and with where we grew up, most of the the girls or whatever. 
he was older than me. But um, yeah, man. There's some foul stuff. Set me up to get jumped and to lie to me. It told me that he smashed my girl and just all type of two faced stuff. Used to always say slick remarks to me and stuff like that. Playing my face, be two faced. Mm hmm. Yeah. All all behind females. You know. And I never did him wrong. I really never. I never did him wrong. I never. I, I've never really done anybody wrong first. Uh, as far as black people I grew up with in my, in my life, it was it was always them. You know. It was always them first, and then I was like, you know what? I got to fall back, you know? Yeah, man. Shit's crazy, man. That The hate is crazy. I dealt with the hate from my own people my whole life. I really have. I'm not making this up, man. I swear to you, man. God is my witness. So can't nobody tell me that black people don't hate each other, you know? Can't nobody tell me that, man. I feel like I covered everything I need to cover in this part, too, man. Comment down below. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace and love.